Hey, what's going on everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. My name is Ali and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create multiple screens inside an iPad frame. The purpose of this video is to show you how easy you can work with custom animation and apply multiple animations at the same time. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and grab a rectangle shape so I can use this as my background. And then I click on it just to grab it into my canvas. Click on the expand icon so that I can expand it for a full screen size. And then I'm going to change its color by clicking on the color icon right here to make it a little bit darker in blue, just like that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'll need to grab nine rectangles so that I can use those um, as multiple screens inside of my um, iPad frame. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to fast forward for the sake of the video. All right, so now that I've got my nine screens on my canvas all lined up and looks good, the next thing I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and grab an iPad frame just by clicking on my studio right here. And then I'm going to search for an iPad and then I'll choose this one and drag it into my canvas. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'll rotate it just by hovering over until I see a double sided arrow like that and then rotate it to give me a landscape mode. And then I'm going to need to resize it and, uh, you know, expand it so that um, it covers the whole screen but the edges of my app on my ipad is going to be um, around my canvas from the outside so let me go ahead and do that right now and show you what i want to do so just expanding it like that as you can see i'm trying to line it up with my canvas frame from the outside because we will use custom animation you know a little bit later to animate this and uh, transition to our second scene. So here we go, we got that covered. Now the next thing I'm going to do here is I'll go ahead and grab all group all the layers together. So I'm going to expand my timeline by just hovering over until I see a double sided arrow like that. This allows me to expand my timeline so I can you know see a full screen and then I can easily just go ahead and select all those layers together by holding left click on my mouse and then I'm going to select all the layers um, just like that except for the background and I'm going to go ahead and group this together now I'm going to right click again and then you know give this a name so this will be my first scene and just so we are all organized, I'm going to right click on the background that I chose in the first place. And then I'm going to right click and give that a name and call this background. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my timeline back into position again. And then the next thing I'm going to do in order for me to animate this uh, is to use custom animation. But before I do that, I need to go ahead and grab some icons to put them, you know, on top of those uh, nine screens. So I'm going to go to my studio and then I'm just going to take this off. The next thing I'm going to do is I'll go and click on icons. And then I'm going to start and grabbing, you know, some of my icons right here to fill in the uh, positions of my screens. So let me go ahead and do that right now. And I'll fast forward this for the sake of the video. All right, so I've got my nine icons right here on my screen. Everything looks good. And so what I did is I basically ungrouped the nine rectangles that I added, including the iPad frame, so I can group all of those together and then I can animate them the way I want to. Now, the other thing I did is I basically expanded the duration um, instead of six seconds to eight seconds. So if I go inside the group of scene number one right now, double click it, and then if I expand my timeline and then i scroll down now you can see that those are the nine layers 
of my screens, including the iPad layer. And then we've got all of those nine icons and then another duplicate of those um, to stay on my screen for eight seconds. So let me go ahead and shorten my timeline and get it back into position. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and start animating all of those icons by using custom animation for each icon. So I'm gonna start with this one right here and then I'm gonna click on it and then I'm gonna click on add animation. I'm gonna go to properties and then I'm gonna set position and rotation. So remember, this is what I said that you are able to use multiple animations at the same time. That's what I love about custom animation. So now we've chosen position, rotation, and then the easing will stay smooth as is for in and out. And then I'm going to go ahead and hover over between my keyframes, drag them a little to the right so I can click on my first keyframe. And then I'm going to click on the icon right here and 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 I'm going to position it and then I'm going to rotate it. So hover over it until I see a double sided arrow so I can rotate it just like that, get it out of my screen. And then if I click on my second keyframe like that, you will see that it's back to where it should be. Let me just correct this rectangle and then I'm going to go back to my first layer of this icon. So if I go ahead and play this, backward you can see that it's being animated rotation and position and then i'm going to do the same for the rest of the icon so i'm going to go ahead and click on this icon as well and then i'm going to go ahead and click on add animation go to properties set position and rotation and then easing will stay smooth as is for the rest of uh, the rest of the layers so let me go ahead and do that right now and I'm going to hover over again on the icon until I see a double sided arrow so I can rotate it just like that. And then I'm going to get it away of my iPad frame just like that. And then click on my second keyframe. And there you can see it's being animated just like that. Now, what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and click on the third icon and then I'm going to do the same exact thing. So we'll add animation, go to properties choose position and rotation. And then I'm gonna get back my keyframes to the starting point of the track. Click on my first keyframe right here. And then I'm gonna cl click on my icon to make sure this is going to be my starting point. And then um, the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hover over again until I see a double-sided arrow. And then I can rotate it maybe just like, like that and then move it outside of my canvas just like this, click on my second keyframe, and there you have it. Next up is to click on the next uh, icon, and then I'm gonna go to the starting point again, click on add animation, and then I'm gonna click on position and rotation. Now I'm gonna hover over again between my keyframes so I can shift them a little to the right so I can click on my first keyframe, like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. So I'm gonna hover over until I see a double-sided arrow and then I rotate it. And then I'm gonna get it away out of my canvas just like that. Click on my second keyframe, make sure that everything is in position. And then I'm gonna go back to the starting point, click on the second layer and we want to animate this as well. So we'll click on add animation, properties, position, rotation, easing will stay as is, hover over between keyframe so I can click on the first keyframe and then I'm going to um, animate this one so I'm going to go ahead and rotate it hover over until I see a double-sided arrow like that and then I'm going to get it away from my canvas just like that click on my second keyframe and there you go now I'm going to go ahead and do the same for the next layer so we'll go back from the starting point do the same thing add animation choose position rotation and then go and hover over between my keyframes, shift them a little to the right so I can click on my first keyframe. And then I'm gonna hover over here on the icon where I can see the double-sided arrow. Um, and then I'm gonna rotate it a little just like that, get it away of my canvas. Click on my second keyframe. Just want to align it and there you have it. Now we have our icon will stay there. And I want to make sure that all my keyframes are lined up together. So let me go ahead and do that before I add 
custom animation to the rest of the layers. Just as easy as that. And then the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and animate the next layer. So I'll go back to the starting point again, click on add animation, choose position, rotation, and then I'm gonna shift my keyframe so I can click on the first keyframe. And then I'm going to hover over on the icon right here until I see a double-sided arrow. And then I rotate it a little and I can bring it outside of my canvas just like that. Click on my second keyframe, make sure that everything is in position line up the keyframes with each other like this and then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the next layer so we'll start again from the beginning and then we'll click on add animation position rotation easing as is hover over between both keyframes to so shift them a little so i can click on my first keyframe and then i'm going to rotate this one like this move it to the top of my screen, click on my second keyframe to make sure that everything is in position and line this up with the rest of the keyframes like that. And then we'll go ahead and animate the next layer. So we'll go ahead and start from the beginning, add animation, position, rotation, hover over between both keyframes and then click on the first keyframe and I'm going to hover over my icon like that, rotate it, and then I'm going to move it outside of my canvas, click on my second keyframe to make sure that everything is in position, and then line this up with my rest of the custom animations that I have for here. So if I go ahead and start playing this from uh, the beginning, let's see what that looks like. Okay, this looks good. And so the next thing I'm going to do here is I'll exit my group by just clicking on back to main timeline. And then what I want to do is make sure that as soon as the animation ends for all icons, I need to start scaling the whole screen, including the iPad frame. So just to write about here, and I'm going to click on my group right here and then click on add animation. And then I'm going to click on scale. Now the easing is going to be smooth as is. So I'm going to click on the first keyframe right here. Click on my screen to make sure this is going to be my starting point. And then I'm going to click on my second keyframe. And then um, I'll go ahead and resize this and scale this down like that. And then I'm going to center it. Maybe resize it again, just like that. And then make sure that it's centered on my canvas. So now you can see that we have our icons, you know, being animated from the beginning of the scene. And then, if, and it's, and then, you know, it scales down. So this basically shows us, you know, a transition from the nine screens inside the tablet into a smaller size of our tablet. Now, the next thing I'm going to do here is I'll need to grab a couple of, um, you know, hands um, shapes. So I'm going to go to my studio and then I'm going to click on all and then search for hand. Now I'm going to use a 2D hand. And that would be uh, this one here. So I'll drag and drop it into my canvas. Now I need a duplicate of this layer, so I'm going to go ahead and click click on control D or command D if you're using uh, Mac and I'll go ahead and I need to flip this one. So I'll click on properties and then I'm going to click on a flip icon right here. Now the next thing I'm going to do here is I'll go ahead and position my hands where I want them to be on my iPad frame, just like that. And then the next thing I'm going to do here is I'll need to exit my studio just so I can see a little bit better. And then what I want to do here is I want to animate those hands um, so that they can zoom in or scale down, I'm sorry, um, along with the iPad. So what I want to do is I'm going to click on both hands and then I want to get them back to the first keyframe of the scaling action for my group, just like that.
and then I'm going to go ahead and click on the first one right here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and click on add animation, go to properties, and then I'm going to set position and then scale. So now this has, you know, created for me keyframes. So I'm going to shift this hover over between keyframes and shift them a little to the right so I can click on my first keyframe. And then I want to position my hand just right outside the canvas like this. And I want to scale it up a little. And make sure that they're outside of my canvas. Now, if I go ahead and click on my second keyframe, you'll notice that it goes back into the right position where I want it to be. So I'm going to do the same exact thing for the other hand. So go back to the starting point of the track, and then I'm going to click on the second one right here. Go and click on Add Animation. I'll choose Position and Scale, and then I'm going to hover over between my keyframes so I can move, shift this a little, and be able to click on my first keyframe. So now what I want to do here is I'll uh, scale up my hand a little, just like that. And I'm also going to position it on the iPad from the outside. Now, if I go ahead and click on my second keyframe on this hand, so you'll see everything that, you know, uh, goes into position. So let me go ahead and start playing this, show you what that looks like. Now I want to play this backward, you know, in a slow motion so you can see a little bit better. But first I want to make sure that I line up my keyframes of the group. So everything moves together. And then if I start, you know, playing this backward slowly, you can see that everything is playing smoothly. So we have our iPad scales down as well as the hands scaling down and also position in the right place now i'm going to leave about you know a second and then i'm going to um, add an animation again for my hands so that i can get them to uh, slide away from the canvas so i'll start with clicking on the first hand you know on this one and then i'm going to go ahead and click on add animation now this time i'm going to choose uh, position and then rotation and i'm going to keep the easing as is so we'll go ahead and click on the first keyframe, click on my hand to make sure this is going to be my uh, starting point. And then I'm gonna click on the second keyframe and then I want to rotate this a little, just like that. And then I'm gonna take it down out of my canvas. I'll do the same exact thing, thing for the second hand. So I'm gonna click on that layer, click on add animation, position, rotation. And then I'm going to click on my first keyframe. Let me just exit this, click on my first keyframe right here. Click on my hand to make sure this is going to be my starting point. And then I'm going to click on the second keyframe. And then I want to hover over until I see a double-sided arrow. Rotate my hand a little, just like this. And then I'm going to slide it down outside of my canvas, like that. And then if I play this back for you, you can see how smooth this is. Now, the next thing I'm going to do here is I want to add another animation to my iPad. But before I do this, let me go ahead and select both layers of my hand so I can group them together. And then now I want to go ahead and scale this down and move it up a little to the left side. So I'll go ahead and click on that group again. And then um, I'm, I'm sorry, this will be the right group, the one at the bottom here, scene one. And then I'm going to add an animation. So I'll choose position. And then I'm also going to choose scale. Now I'm going to keep the easing, you know, again, smooth as is. So we'll just go ahead and click on my first keyframe. Click on the layer right here. Make sure it's centered. Again, click on the keyframe and then click on my icon. And then I'm going to Click on the second keyframe right here, and then I'm going to scale this down just like that. And then I want to move it a little to the left side right here.
Now, maybe I want to add um, another property. So we will go ahead and click on properties and do rotation as well. So I'm going to click on my first keyframe one more time, click on my iPad, and then I'm going to click on my second keyframe. And I actually want to rot hover over and then rotate this a little just like that. And then I'm going to get it back into a position. So this is how it's going to look like. It's going to rotate, it's going to scale down and then uh, move a little to the left side. And then I'm going to place my playhead on the second keyframe so I can add another um, animation to it. And then I'll go under properties. So I'll go and click rotation. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose easing. That would be out and then I'll choose back. Then I'm going to click on my first keyframe. Click on my iPad right here to make sure this is going to be my starting point. And then I'm going to click on my second keyframe and then I'm going to hover over on my iPad until I see a double sided arrow. Then I can go ahead and rotate it back into position just like that. And then let me go ahead and play this backwards so you can see what happens. So this is exactly what we wanted. So we'll start from the beginning. So you can see all the icons are being rotated and positioned onto our screen. And then the iPad, you know, scales down along with the hands. And we have a couple of seconds and then the, the hands just slides down at the bottom of the screen. Then we have our iPad um, scales down and rotates a little, then it rotates back to position just like that. And then the next thing I'm going to do here is I'll go and click on studio go to icons and just remove the search term that I use and then click on um, icons one more time. Actually, uh, let me go ahead and click on all and then I'll search for school. And then get the icon that I use in my previous example. So this was the one. So I'll go ahead and drag it into my timeline, exit my studio. And the next thing I'm going to do here is I'll go ahead and re resize this one just like that and then position it underneath my tablet. Now, what I want to do here is I want to um, add custom animation for this to expand from um, from the bottom, just like this one, like to scale up like that into its original size. So to do that, what I need to do here is I need to uh, click on the anchor point and then I'm going to click on the one at the bottom uh, in the you know in the in the middle right here and then the next thing i'm going to do here is i'll go ahead and add my animation so i'll go to properties and then i'm going to choose scale easing would be um, out and then we'll choose back so let me go ahead and hover over between my keyframes right here and then i'm going to click on my first keyframe then i'm going to hover over my icon until i see a double-sided arrow right here and then i can shrink it down just like that and if i click on my second keyframe you can see that it goes back into a position where i wanted it to be so if i go ahead and start playing this backward now you can see it does exactly what i wanted the next thing i'm going to do here is i'll go ahead and add a text but before i do this let me just go ahead and zoom out of my timeline and then I'm going to uh, shorten this track to make sure that everything is lined up together. And then I'm going to add a text. And then I'll change the color to white like that. Now I'm going to double click so I can edit my text and say, hello, creators. Like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and click and resize it make it a little bit bigger just like that and so the next thing i want to do is i want to shorten the track of my text to line up everything together and then what i need to do here is i'm going to need to group this and mask it at the same time so i'm going to right click and then uh, click on group and then once that's done then I'll, I'll need to go ahead and turn on the mask feature so now what I need to do is to go ahead and um, go inside my group right here. And then I may just click on the 
um, text and change its color to any color just for me to make some edits and then I'll get it back to uh, white color. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. And I'm gonna click on my text layer, click on add animation. So just so you know, the, you know, the reason why I did a group, uh, a mask group for this, uh, because I want to set my boundaries for this text to, you know, to be like that. So when it animates, it looks like it's masked and it comes out of uh, my screen within my canvas, but not outside of it. So I'm going to show you exactly uh, what that looks like. So I clicked on my text layer in the timeline right here. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'll go and use motion preset uh, this time. And that will be position. And then we will use uh, we will use back right. So I'm going to click on that. And then I can go ahead and change the color back to white as it was before. And then let's go ahead and go back to my main timeline and show you exactly what that looks like. So if I play this a little slow, you can see it goes, it, it you know, goes, you know, it goes out of my screen and shows that it's kind of you know masked so it doesn't go out you know it doesn't come in from outside of my canvas but what i want to do here is i'm going to go and double click to go inside my group and so what i need to do is to expand my boundaries so that it covers the, the whole text including the animation so i'll go ahead and edit this manually just like that and then i'm going to you know hover over and um, expand my boundaries so that it covers the whole text just like this and then let's go ahead and go back to the main timeline and see what that looks like. Okay, there's still a little bit of, you know. Let me go inside my group one more time and then I'll need to go ahead and edit it manually. Um, just click on the hand icon to move it a little to the left and then click on my selection tool again so I can expand this to give this more space so that you know it's still showing up on my canvas and then let me go ahead and click on back to the main timeline and see if that works better yep now let me go ahead and just position it a little to the right on my canvas just like this And there you have it. So let me go ahead and play this all together from the beginning. All right, so this looks cool. I hope that you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.